We sell products manufactured in the U.S. into China because we're a materials company, and we sell about $500 million of our U.S. manufactured product into China. On a global basis, that's about 2% of our revenue. So it's Chinese customers, but American-made products. We used to have some businesses on the ground in China manufacturing some packaging and some other products, and we did divest those a few years ago, primarily because we couldn't really establish a competitive advantage. Hmm. But China as a market uh, for the kinds of products we make that feed consumers, packaging and fluff pulp for baby diapers, is an important market, as is sure. all the markets globally. And I wonder then if it actually it behooves a lot of corporate America to say, you know what, maybe we do need a White House that will stand up and create better terms for doing business with a country like China, because one-on-one, -on -one, none of us really have the power, right? I think on a macro basis, what we believe in is fair and free trade. And there's definitely some elements of what's being discussed between our two countries right now that would improve that. But from the standpoint of the market, uh, just, let me just give you another statistic just to put it into perspective. As a manufacturing company that's making uh, products out of renewable natural resources, we have about 28 percent of what we make in the U.S. exported to other markets around the world, including China. That's 9,000 manufacturing jobs for my company and thousands more in the ecosystem sure. that supports us. So we need the growth for, for competitively advantaged products that the world needs. We need to be able to access those markets. And there's a lot of things that can be improved to make doing business around the world, including China, more uh, fair and on a level play playing field. Yeah, understood. And Mark, let's talk, as you mentioned, your products go into everything from baby diapers to the whole gamut of uh, what happens in the economy. What are you seeing out there? Uh, strength? How's the U.S. doing? How's China? I think from a U.S. standpoint, which of course is the biggest part of our company, we still see a strong economy. We are a company that rides a little bit below GDP typically, so it feels about like uh, the, G G the GDP number that we just saw. Uh, macroeconomic indicators like non-durable production, um, housing starts, things of that nature give us confidence that 2019 may not be as strong as 18 for us, but it'll be a firm, strong year. Outside of the U.S., uh, Europe has slowed for, for us mm. uh, like it has for a lot of people. Mm -hmm partly due to individual country issues, the uncertainty with Brexit and so forth. And actually in the fourth quarter of 18 and the beginning of 19, we did see a slowdown in demand in China. After the Chinese New Year, that's, that's actually coming back, not snap back, but in a slow, steady uh, return. That's, that's great granularity. Again, helps us understand, okay, so maybe going back to early Feb, the trends there are looking a little better. Um, yes. Here in the U.S., it, are you, I remember, Mark, when I visited out there, you know, the, the Starbucks Christmas cup was like the, the closely guarded secret, you know, of the... Yes, it was. Yeah. It was. Are you guys still in that business? You know, we, we actually combined our business with another company called Graphic Packaging and we retained a 20... 21% uh, ownership position. So our business that you saw is now with one of the best consumer packaging companies okay. in the world. And uh, so it's a strategic way of us seeing the full value in that business. It's a great business and graphic packaging is doing a great job with, uh, with the IP assets and people. I think that's the most insider information I've ever had was knowing what that Christmas cup was going to look like, you know, a couple months before it. Uh... Anyway, moving on, Mark, final question, and, and you mentioned this. Um, there's so much emphasis these days on renewables, on taking plastics out of the supply, even on paper, yes. making sure that a lot of that can be recycled and reused. Uh, what efforts are you guys making here? What, what's the consumer and business demand like? What's going to be the next generation of products that you think could be more eco-friendly? I think what we have to remember is that the consumer wants to know that they're not doing any harm in the way that they shop and the way that they live their lives. So for us, it starts with the renewable natural resource, wood fiber and recovered fiber. We make 75 percent of our own energy from carbon neutral biomass to produce our products. And then in the case of our corrugated packaging, 90 percent of those boxes are recycled back into the system. And we're doing some innovative things like making small packaging for e-commerce customers mm. so that for things like jewelry and cosmetics, they can get a box designed exactly for that purpose. Mm. We've even got some machinery that they can put in their plants that take up very little space. So we're always trying to make packaging and products with a lower and lighter environmental footprint. Hey, smaller packages for what I'm getting, I, I would love. <laughs> Mark, thanks so much for all of your efforts and for joining me today.